Hello all, I'm Shreesa Medichala and in this video we shall discuss the basics of a semiconductor technology called fill bits. All around the world, engineers have already studied CMOS technology which has been widely adapted by existing and upcoming circuit designers. So what is the need of a different technology? According to Gordon Moore's prediction, which was later called Moore's law, the number of transistors on a chip doubles roughly every two years because of the shrinking size of those transistors. But as the minimum channel is reduced below 100 nanometers, the features kept getting smaller and the current leakage at off state grew so large due to quantum mechanical tunneling and short channel effects like DIBL. And this meant a drastic increase in the chip's power consumption. Many changes in the existing MOSFET structure have been done to encounter these increasing problems as the devices kept being scaled down further and further over time. For example, changing the gate material, gate oxide material to reduce this leakage. In traditional long channel MOSFETs, leakage parts that are far from the gate cannot be controlled by it. Taking this as a base for modification, Chen Wing Hu, who was a former professor of electrical engineering at UC Berkeley, came up with a solution of giving gate a greater control on the flow of charge in channel by modifying the planar structure of a MOSFET into a three-dimensional structure. This was later termed as FinFET. This device can be designed where a thin body is controlled by multiple gates based on its structure. Intel's first trigate implementation took place in 22 nanometer technology in 2011. Now let's take a look at the FinFET structure. To understand the structure of FinFITs, let us first know how a conventional 2D MOSFET looks like. It consists of a metal gate that controls the formation of a channel between a source and a drain. Below the gate is an insulator or high-k dielectric that makes the gate terminal an open circuit from the rest of the MOSFET body. The channel is formed right underneath the oxide layer and so the source, the drain and the channel are in the same plane, hence the name planar arrivity. Whereas in FinFETs, a physical fin-shaped path is made as a channel that projects vertically above the plane of source and drain and gate is wrapped on the three sides of it, giving the gate a better control of the carriers in the channel. So the channel consists of two vertical surfaces and the top surface of the fin. The three sides of the gate can be constructively used to make multiple gates, that is multi-gate FinFETs, with a 3D channel. Since the gate is in these directions, the charge carriers are also attracted or repelled along these three surfaces. So if we have the width of the fin and the height, the length of the channel would be twice the height plus the width. These figures here show the comparison between a bulk MOSFET and a bulk FinFET. On the left, we see the source and the drain as we just discussed, and the channel here is formed below the high-k dielectric and into the plane of the paper. Whereas on the right, the gate is on the three sides, so the channel is also in these three directions, in the plane of the paper. However, as we can see, the plane of source and drain is perpendicular to the plane of the channel in the case of finfets. Another important term in the finfet devices is the pitch. Generally, a finfet structure has two to four fins in the same substrate. The fin pitch is defined kind of as the distance that gets periodically repeated from fin to its next fin. So essentially, the fin pitch is the sum of fin width and the space between fins. It is used to determine the layout area. Now as for the symbols, on the left is a symbol of an n-channel fin pit where the substrate is p-type and the source and drain are n-type. And on the right side, we can see a p-channel fin pit. Depending on the structure of gate, which we'll discuss in a few minutes, the two gate terminals are shorted or kept at different voltages. Now let us look at some important types of architecture in FinFET technology. The first kind is shorted gate and insulated or independent gate FinFETs. These configuration of FinFETs are formed based on whether the front and back sides of the gate are shorted together or are independent from each other. As we know, there are three sides in which the gate can be present. Two common sides of the gate are the front gate and the back gate. If these two are shorted together with the top gate, the entire three sides form a single gate terminal as shown on the left side. 
on the other hand if we keep them separate that is independent from each other like on the right side then we have two independent terminals which we can put at different voltages so shorted gate configuration has three terminals that is source drain and gate whereas in independent gate configuration we have two gate terminals and a source and a drain that is a total of four terminals one of the main purposes that we do this is to control the threshold voltage in a shorted gate configuration we have a single constant threshold voltage but in the insulated or independent gate configuration we can vary the threshold voltage by varying the potential difference on the two gate terminals on this slide we can see the symbols of shorted gate and independent gate inputs and on the left side we can see that the gate terminals are shorted for the shorted gate configuration this configuration provides rich design space that is consumes lesser area but independent gate configuration handles the short channel effects better than shorted gate configuration we also get a better trade off between delay and power consumption compared to standard fin pets or planar apps so we choose the configuration based on the applications the second kind depending upon the base of the device the double gate transistors are of two types silicon on insulator fin pet and bulk fin pet fin pets can be made on bulk where you first define the fin on the top and then etch deeper into the substrate and provide isolation on either sides these type of fin pets are called bulk fin pets This isolation may be shallow trench isolation, but this also has some difficulties. For example, planarization techniques cannot be used to increase the planarity, that is, flatness of the isolation, because the fin is etched into the substrate. An alternative is to make fin pits on SOI substrate, that is, silicon on insulator, where the device is defined on top of a thin layer of buried oxide. These are SOI fin pits. This box layer reduces leakage and provides ultra low power of operation. For application of SOI technology is easier but the substrate is costlier. Fin width and other dimensions of the transistor can be controlled better in SOI because the fin is etched only on the top but there may be some self heating effects. Now the third kind is double gate and tri gate fin pets. As we have seen earlier in the independent gate configuration the gates were electrically independent but in tri gate and double gate the gates are electrically connected because a single gate electrode is folded over the three sides of the fin the only difference is the activeness of these three sides as the name suggests the double gate fin pit has two effective gates and tri gate fin pit has three effective gates the structures as we can see are almost same except for the fact that in double gate fin pit the gate oxide layer is thicker at the top portion of the fin so that only two gates that is front and back gates are effective for the control of the channel the thick dielectric layer on the top of the fin in the double gate fin pet is called hard mask and due to its thickness it inhibits the electrical feed from the gate this inhibition is not there in tri gate so the gate exerts control on the channel from all the three sides So in tri gate since we have gate at the top too the fin thickness also adds up in the dimensions of the channel so we have a slight width advantage here and since there is current conduction at the top of the fin too the gate to source capacitance is also smaller in this case but it has its own drawbacks like complexity in process and higher parasitics Now let's take a look at the operation of fin pets The characteristics of a fin pit are quite similar compared to that of a traditional MOSFET. MOSFETs have the same kind of channel everywhere, but fin pits are more complicated. Mainly the current flow is in 3D. Most of the cases they are fully depleted transistors. The flow of carriers in sub threshold and threshold condition is a different place compared to high gate bias condition. As you increase the gate voltage from 0, initially charge is in the middle of the fin. and as gate bias increases it moves towards the interface and there may be a little more charge in the corners so at low gate bias conditions most of the current is concentrated in the middle and at high gate voltages most current flows through the corners so it's a very non uniform channel and that's much more difficult to describe using simple mathematical equations the primary working of any fet is based on the charge in the channel 
and the output dream current id that is controlled by the dream to source voltage vds here we can see the id versus vds characteristics of a bulk mosfet and a bulk synfet synfets give higher current compared to plain ir devices similar to mosfet regions of operation the knee of this curve may be reduced as the verge of saturation before which is the triode or linear region and after which is saturation when we compare these two we can see that in saturation region as vds increases the variation of id is less for synfets so that means that the output resistance is higher and channel length modulation is lower could be used for high gain in low supply voltages the on current is also higher for synfets making their i on to i off ratio higher compared to the bulk mosfets the figure here shows the subthreshold characteristics of a synfet in black id increases nearly exponentially in the subthreshold region so it appears linear on a log scale as we can see here as vds is increased from 0.1 volt to 1.1 volt the difference in id is smaller in synfets compared to the difference in id for the same increase of vds in bulk cmos this means that the drain induced barrier lowering is more prominent in mosfets than synfets so overall this is the basic working of synfets degradation of subthreshold slope is one of the major drawbacks in scaling down of mosfets synfets have a better subthreshold slope and let us see how in mosfets subthreshold slope is determined by gate offset capacitance and depletion region capacitance as shown here in these formula in high doping c depletion is higher and degrades the subthreshold slope by this factor eta but in fin fets we don't have the bulk capacitance c dep because the fin is depleted so we have eta almost equal to 1 and this s becomes equal to 2.3 times vt where vt is the thermal voltage equal to 26 millivolts this gives us an almost ideal subthreshold slope bulk mos devices have around 100 millivolt per decade subthreshold slope whereas fin fets as we just saw have only around 60 the advantage of this can be perceived in two ways we can have lower leakage and have on current similar to bulk performance or we can improve the performance with a slightly higher leakage so we can design it depending on the application so do the finfits we are fabricating today have no problems although finfits are designed to have lesser leakage issues as they scale down they still do have some of their own problems self heating effect for one is a prominent problem in finfits today unlike planar devices the channel in a finfit is not embedded in the substrate but instead enveloped by the gate dielectric which is an electrical and thermal insulator the heat generated within the channel by dual heating is trapped and causes the channel temperature to rise planar fets have substrate to dissipate this heat but finfit channel has only a thin connection to the substrate this also gives rise to reliability issues another one is more parasitics gate overlap area is larger due to multiple gates so the parasitic capacitances are also higher they also have fabrication issues like overlay error that is accuracy in printing the various layers on top of each other over time the cost per unit has gone up for fabricating this 3d fets all in all the life expectancy of synfets has been set more or less around 3 and 7 nanometer technologies If it were to go any smaller, transistors would become more difficult to switch up, even with the three-sided gates. TSMC has decided to stay with Finfet for its next process, the three nanometer node. But other companies like Samsung and IBM are switching to a new technology called the nano sheet technology for their three nanometer and two nanometer nodes, respectively. So as we saw. short channel effects are much lesser in synfets compared to mosfets they have improved subthreshold slope lower dibl lower off currents low power consumption and most importantly they are compact though they have some disadvantages and limitations in today's processes clever engineers have always found a way around them he is to hoping moore's law doesn't go invalid any soon Here are the references based on which this material has been prepared.
थैंक यू